our, the great doctrines. Ezekiel chapter 10. And I'm going to just read the first of four verses in Ezekiel chapter 10. Uh, then I looked, and behold, in the firmament there was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone, as appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the, ch the chair, and fill thine hand with coal of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in my sight. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house. When the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court, then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands and let's love the Lord one more time. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord. Let the glory in your presence just fill the house tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank, you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank, you, Lord. Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Uh, last week, we saw that angels are intelligent, moral agents. There are some things that we have know about angels, that we have studied about angels, that we uh, can read about angels. And there's four things that we know about them. They are not embodied. They are not visible. And angels do not marry. And the fourth is angels do not die. And uh, we know that angels were tested. In the beginning, uh, there was an, uh, a little displacement uh, that took place in heaven and one third of the angels fell into and they fell because of sin and, and you, when you think about heaven and the songwriters who pen the words about heaven be a place that there is no sin that lives there and no sin will enter heaven and yet in heaven there was a rebellion and rebellion is a sin of witchcraft and, uh, and since sin was there or the rebellion of sin was there uh, they weren't welcome. And it all started actually with one angel, or an archangel, Lucifer, and because of uh, his wanting to be head over all, and he wanted to be the main one to be worshipped, and we'll get into the reason that he wanted to be worshipped tonight. But he took down one-third of the angels with him. And then we know that two-thirds of the angels pass the test. And they occupy a state of holiness and immortal glory. And tonight, we will get into heaven, the headquarters of the angels. Uh, angels may temporarily cross over from earth's uh, space-time reality and between the eternal home of that they abide in heaven but the vast numbers of angels they live they worship and they receive commands directly from God uh, their commands are direct or directed from the throne of God uh, according to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22, that heavenly Jerusalem is populated by an innumerable company of angels. According to Revelation chapter 5 and verse 11 and 12, 
says there are thousands or 10,000 times 10,000 of thousands. Now, um, I don't know why they didn't just say millions and or billions or trillions, but 10,000 times thousands and thousands. You see, this is the reason why. Because in the Greek language, the highest number is 10,000. So they have 10,000 and thousands, right. and, or 10,000 10, and 10,000 and thousands. So actually what the, the writer uh, John was describing was a number that cannot be numbered. Right. And you know, I thought as a youngster that uh, when you got to a million, you couldn't number anymore. Then you get older and you find out that they invented the word trillion, that it's just a, uh, just a number with more zeros. And then uh, you get zillions, and then you get gazillions, and I don't know what comes after gazillions, you know, just a whole lot more num zeros, numbers with zeros. But uh, what the, the word is describing, it indicates a vast quantity of angels that is beyond calculation. You see, in the very royal court of heaven, God's throne room, the angels directly, regularly encounter the immediate presence of God. And when they walk into the presence of God, upon their lips, if angels have lips, they are proclaiming the holiness of God. With their voices, together in unity. You know, they're, they're not saying blessed trinity, but they're saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, someday, we redeemed humans shall enjoy that blessed experience. When we can also join the angels around the throne of God. Yes. Lifting our voices, crying, holy, holy. And all of a sudden, as the, the, the redeemed ones <coughs> burst into singing, the angels have to fold their wings and take a step back because the church begins to sing a new song. They begin to pour out of this new song words such as, we've been redeemed by the blood of of the Lamb. Oh, thank God for the blood that washes white as snow. I don't know what the words are going to be like. I don't know what the melody is going to be like. But I know it was the blood that begins to change the difference between the, when the angels were proclaiming and when the saints begin to see redemption story. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we have studied in our tabernacle study last year, uh, God's instruction to Moses to install in the Holy of Holies two golden cherubims. And these golden cherubims was to be beaten out of gold. They were to be facing, let their head down, looking upon the uh, mercy seat. Their wings kind of arched over them represents a place of God's holiness. And under the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant, where the God's presence dwelt, the figures of the cherubims were to be embroidered upon the fabric that hung on the veil. The veil, the lace veil, or the linen veil, also they were to embroidery uh, cherubims or angels upon that cloth of the tabernacle. Angels constantly worship yes. God. Yes. Angels never cease praising the Lord. Amen. Uh, the four beasts of Revelation, there are likely angelic throne attendants and which Ezekiel described as living creatures or cherubims. In Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8 it says, Rest not day 
and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. As they gathered around the throne, they proclaimed with a loud voice, Worthy is a lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Woo, hallelujah. You can almost feel the power Yes. Of the angels as they would proclaim he is the worthy lamb that was slain and he's worthy to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Though angels may inspire awe. And I thank Sister Rachel for the beautiful nativity scene right. that she had gifted to us. And I was telling Sister Sandra uh, this afternoon, and I may have mentioned, I think, either this morning uh, or last Sunday, that uh, I take more notice because it's been brought to my attention over the past several years. Dr. David Jeremiah, he had done several teachings on uh, angels. And so when I looked at the angel in this nativity scene, and she stands like this, I said, look, just look at her face. She has that look of, ah, oh, you poor soul. She, yeah, it's a sweet face. And uh, of course, that was one thing Dr. David Jeremiah pointed out, that angels... You know, they paint them in such a way that, or portray them in such a way like, oh, you poor thing. But you know what? There's something about angels that they don't pity us. They are God's messengers. Right. Uh, angels in the scriptures are forbidden for humans to worship. And that brings me back to the point I was going to make earlier. I said I was going to say and that's what caused the rebellion in hell and heaven that caused Lucifer to lose his position and for God to even create a place called hell. Because see, Lucifer wanted to be worshipped. That's right. Lucifer saw and got very jealous because saw the angels around the throne of God worshipping God. And he wanted that place. I ought to receive that worship. I want to be like the Most High. I want to have that seat to receive all kinds of praise. We got to be careful, uh, even as human humanoids, that we don't find a place a place of setting in the uh, to receive worship. Or praise. Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing wrong with a congratulations, a word of praise, you know, uh, to, a recognition. But when we feel like we have to live on the applause of men right. and ladies, that everything that we do is so good, so right, and that people just bow down to us. You know, and we stand in a very terrible position. Right. But see, that's. You know, the angels are not to be worshipped. Uh, angels render service to Christians and to do God's bidding. Uh, angels are under the authority of Jesus Christ. They serve as His attendants and messengers, delivering uh, divine judgments and decrees, as well as protecting God's saints. You know, there are times that uh, we don't know what may have happened but we say, well, the hand of God was upon us. God's hand of protection was about us. That is true. And we can even say, you know, the angel of the Lord was there protecting us. Right. Because perhaps God from the throne room expedited angel number 99 down to our need at the hour. Uh, there was a, an incident of an individual, they're not, I'm not sure what happened, they're still not sure, uh, but there was like uh, two vehicles 
and uh, they were in the center and all they could do was they saw these two vehicles come like this and they were trapped in, in the middle all they did was close their eyes and say Jesus right. when they opened their eyes there's no wreck uh, everything was normal you know whether it was angels that came down and protected them so there was no harm done it was the miraculous or it was the hand of God that just picked them up and just right. moved them out of the way does God do this for everyone no but there's some but there's a purpose in why God's yes. uh, dispatches his angels his servants uh, to our need uh, cherubims were dispatched to guard the entrance of the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve was kicked out of the garden there was a flaming cherubim that was positioned at the, uh, map of the, the entrance of the garden and he just went around in circles protecting that garden until it was destroyed uh, by the overgrowth of weeds and uh, other things of life that destroyed the garden. Uh, an angel was prepared to slay a wayward prophet called Balaam. Prompted by Daniel's constant supplication. You know, for 21 days, Daniel prayed and interceded for a need. Yes. But uh, Daniel was... was uh, met with by an angel. And this angel had a name. It was Gabriel. Gabriel arrived to bring Daniel skill and understanding. Sometime later, the same angel was dispatched to meet Daniel again. Uh, and then Gabriel was also dispatched to appear before Zacharias in uh, Luke chapter 1. Because as Zacharias was uh, performing some duties, Gabriel came into where Zacharias was and he introduced himself. He said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show these things, or show thee these glad tidings. He uh, made an announcement to Zacharias about him having a son. And Zacharias had a little unbelief, a little doubt. And Gabriel didn't appreciate that. And he said, okay, I'll, I'll give you, I'm going to give you a sign. Until that child is born. I'm sorry, Zacharias, but you're not going to be able to speak a word. So you might as well get yourself prepared. Get you a, a, a pen, a, a piece of paper. Because when you walk out of this place, you're not going to say anything until your son is born. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, in just a few moments, a few se split seconds, he went to try to say something to Gabriel, and guess what? Before Gabriel had a chance to move out of the uh, that little inner court, in the Holy of Holies, uh, there was no sound. And I could see Gabriel just saying, see, I told you. I told you. Angels have a way to, to love to do stuff like that. But see, on another occasion, there was a different angel that, and his name was Michael. And he appeared to Daniel in a vision. After explaining he had been held up by a fierce uh, prince of Persia. Uh, Daniel received a promise. Daniel received uh, his message. It was revealed to Daniel the destiny of God's people. At other times, angels functions as heavenly tour guides, leading prophets uh, through visionary experiences and showing them the meaning of the mysteries of things. Uh, we know that John the Revelator he wasn't literally taken into uh, the heaven 
but he was given a vision that took him to a place, to the new Jerusalem. He was shown around heaven. We can we have the book that uh, we can read and get a glimpse, get a little taste of heaven. And then we come into a church service and we begin to worship the Lord and His presence comes down to meet us where we are and we get another taste of heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Heaven is a beautiful place filled with glory, filled with grace. Oh, and I want to go there. Don't you want to go there? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, angels have tended to appear on earth in greater frequency during significant uh, juncture of history. It seems that God has wanted to underscore the importance of certain events by requesting angels coming down to be in attendance and to uh, deliver the critical message. Uh, during the time of the patriarchs, we see that Hagar uh, had experienced two angelic beings. She had two visitations. The first time was when she and her uh, young son was, or first time, pardon me, was the first time that she was sent out of the presence of Sarah. And of course, Abraham intervened and brought her back home. But the second time, she had uh, an angelic visitation. This time it was with uh, uh, Hagar and Ishmael. And uh, they were sent out, and she thought she was going to lay down and just die. But an angel visited her in her distress and said, Thou shalt not die. And began to give her a promise that God has seen her tears. God has heard her request. And Ishmael would also be a great nation. And we, of course we know that because of this great nation, Israel and the Arabs have been at war with each other ever since. Uh, we know that the angels visited Sodom before Lot's rescue and the city's destruction. Uh, angels spoke to Abraham about this uh, not sacrificing Isaac. Not to talk him out of it, but to stop him. It was the angel of the Lord who grabbed his hand that had, had held the dagger that was going to take the life of his son. And the angel said to Abraham, wait a minute, don't do your son any harm. That's right. We see that angels appeared to Jacob in Bethel as he was on his way to uh, an uncle's house as he was fleeing for his life. And we see that it was in the same place on his return some 21, possibly 22 years later as he was homeward bound. This time with his two wives and his children and his servants and all of the worldly goods of his wealth as he was going home. But he was desperate. I need an answer from God. I want to know if all is well. How is it going to be with my brother? And we know that uh, Jacob had an encounter with an angel of the Lord. And he left a different man. Uh, likewise, angelic activity increases dramatically across the time frame uh, preceding the birth of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. We see that John the Baptist had an encounter with an angel. Angels also made their appearance during Jesus' birth. During his infancy, during the temptation, the, you know those three, we know the three temptations of Christ. Each time the angels of God came down to minister to him. 
she I, I'm, I'm so thankful that there are ministering angels in our hour of greatest need when we feel destitute depressed or oppressed or all stressed out of because of life and we get in a room sit down and all of a sudden we sense a presence a presence of God possibly it's the angels from the presence of God came there to fill our room fill our space oh hallelujah we see that when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane the angels were there during resurrection we know that the angels were there in the garden tomb. After all, Mary and the other ladies, they thought perhaps it was the gardener. But you know, that's one thing I've never seen in a cemetery. Uh, the gardeners dressed up in suits. These angels or these gardeners were dressed in white apparel. And uh, probably not your ordinary gardeners. But these women mis did mistake them for gardeners. Ask, tell us please, sir, where did they take the body of our Lord? And then they did this strange thing. He says, uh, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? Oh, aren't you glad for the good news? Yes. Yo, we see that the angels were there at the graveside. We also see the day that he made his ascension back into glory, the angels were there. Yes. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. 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 During the ministry of the early church, there were angels. Go to the book of Acts and look how many times there were angels that made their appearance yes. in the form of, a, of individuals. There was an angel that even had the keys. He said, uh, Hey, Peter. Threw the sandals at me. Peter, get your sandals on. <laughs> Come on, boy, get out of there. You know, they, they probably weren't all feminine. I, I can't imagine uh, an angel like, uh, what was his name? Uh, they went down to save uh, Clarence. Clarence. <laughs> but, that, but let's give him a little deeper voice. Hey, Peter, let's get out of here. That, it's like, wait a minute, that sounds like one of the Roman guards, you know. But when Peter stood up, his chains fell off. When they got to the city gates, he went and see where they took the key and unlocked the gate. And, but as he got to the gate, the gates were already starting to part open. We know that there was an angel of the Lord that visited Peter when he was on the rooftop taking a nap, saying, guess what, Peter, you better get up because there's a couple men down the door and you're going to go with them uh -huh. because there's a man named Cornelius. Now, whether they told him that, what the man's name was, but there's a house that you're going to minister to. He had this weird dream about vision about all these unclean things. And he said, No, Lord, those are unclean. And God said, Wait a minute, don't call what I've cleansed clean. Preparing him for a greater ministry. Perhaps the same hour, the same day. No, it couldn't have been because Cornelius was told to go send them. So it had to be a few days before. The angel made an appearance to Cornelius and he said, you know what? God has heard every prayer that you pray. God has seen. Maybe that angel had a preaching spirit. God has seen every nickel and every dime you put in offering. Oh, let me. Let's go a little further. Cornelius, it wasn't just about the pennies and nickels and dimes and the quarters. But he saw the, the silver shekels. He saw the that you had put into the offering. God has seen you feed the poor. He's seen you clothe those who had no clothes. He's seen how you've helped people. Oh, Cornelius, let me tell you what God is going to do for you and your household. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. My 
Carmelius went through sending out those men. If God can do it for Peter and for Paul, who said, What? Don't move this ship tonight or today, because tonight there was an angel of the Lord who stood by me. Shut your mouth, Paul. You're just a prisoner. You don't know nothing. You're, a, you're, you're too smart for your own riches. But Paul rests assured that God stood by him and gave some orders. Don't loose the ropes off the ship. They did anyway, and guess what? Paul was right. So the next time, Paul said, Oh, the angel of the Lord was here. Yeah, we better listen to Paul. We know what, got, what we got into the last time because we didn't listen to him. But in closing tonight, angels will play a major role in Christ's second coming and then the final judgment. Oh, hallelujah. But remember, angels are not to be worshipped. Angels are God's messengers. Uh -huh. Angels are maybe just one element higher than what we are because they can transcend from heaven to earth. But they were created. They were made, whether God spoke them into existence, to worship Him and Him alone. We are created. We were made in God's likeness. And guess what? We were created and made and fashioned to worship yes. Him. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and let's just worship the Lord tonight.